Hello everyone, I'm Julie and I'm very happy to be able to join you in this IPHU as uh, the person guiding you through the session, which will be about privatization and commercialization of health and healthcare. So let's start right away. And most nations in the world have recognized the right to health. Our health is affected by the conditions in which we grow, live, work and die. Being able to go to a doctor is only one factor. However, people with the least financial capacities to pay for health services are the most likely to be in need of them at a certain point in their life. So when something is recognized as a fundamental human right, this implies that states have the duty to protect, promote and secure the conditions necessary to fulfill this right. On the other hand, citizens have the right to organize themselves to claim their rights. The state has a prior responsibility to take all appropriate measures to ensure equality of access to healthcare services, to diminish health efficiencies among the population, to eliminate discrimination in the field of healthcare, and to make sure its citizens live, grow, age, work, and die in the most healthy conditions attainable. However, healthcare alone cannot be responsible for better population health. Health and disease are not distributed equally in society, and disease disproportionately affects those who have less access to resources, such as food, clean water, and environment, education, safe and stable jobs, and solidarity-based welfare systems. Our health is just determined by the social position we found ourselves in. Although healthcare services can only play a limited role in the overall health of population, their accessibility remains a major determinant. When sick, Households often encounter financial barriers for their cure. This happens, for example, when they have to pay fees to access healthcare, when specific treatments are not covered by a public or social insurance, or when discriminatory laws exclude some groups. In those circumstances, people have to make difficult choices. Either they postpone the care, risking a worsening health situation, or they end up impoverished due to catastrophic health expenditure. The latter option often leads to households having to sell livestock or cut down on food or education expenditures. This does not only happen in systems that rely on user fees. For example, in insurance-based systems, such as the United States, catastrophic health expenditure is a reality, also for those who are insured. Also in Belgium, one in 10 people postpones treatment because they cannot afford a doctor, even if the coverage system is considered as universal. In the healthcare sector, privatizations come in all shapes and shades. Essential is the way care is transformed into a commercial relationship between a supplier and a buyer. And the making of profit is made possible. This is often accompanied by legislative changes. Changing power relations on the international level pushed since the 80s. Selective primary healthcare, with a focus on cost efficiency and the promotion of specific interventions, mainly for children and women. Meanwhile, the leading global financial institutions, like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, were implementing their infamous structural adjustment programs throughout the 80s. These programs were imposed on so-called developing countries as a way of opening up new markets to foreign investors. Their market-oriented health reforms led to massive cuts in public healthcare expenditure in low- and middle-income countries and to the privatization of healthcare systems. The dramatic result was that, by the turn of the millennium, most healthcare systems in these countries were crumbling. A dominant idea settled that the state should not provide health services directly, but should play an enabling role, making the state more a manager of a broad range of services providers than a direct and active player. We still witness how private sector man management is presented as an acceptable solution, legitimized by the crumbling state of public health services. Also during the 80s, international institutions started funding partnership programs with private actors, mostly called philanthropists. This meant a shift away from an international health agenda, 
set mainly by public governmental actors within multilateral institutions. Often, these corporate players have indirect interests in the pharmaceutical industry, health services, or insurance companies. There are structural reasons why market logic doesn't lead to better healthcare for society. Very often, the extraction of profit is at the expense of needed investments in infrastructure, research, health workers, and equal access. There are six often used misconceptions which need to be clarified. Privatization triggers higher inequality. When healthcare is privatized, we find catastrophic health expenditure in underprivileged households and worsening health conditions when people postpone care. Privatizations also generate health systems on two speeds. High quality private services for those who can afford it and slow underfinanced public services for those left behind. Finally, private sector invests mostly in the more profitable, specialized secondary and tertiary hospitals in cities. Rural areas and preventive primary health care are often overlooked. In a privatized system, the weakened public sector bears the risks while the private sector gets the profits. Research by Eurodebt shows that public-private partnerships often appear to turn out to be more expensive than if the process would have been publicly funded and led from the start. Despite the successful efforts of neoliberal ideology to mainstream the contrary narrative, there is evidence globally that systems that are not for profit do better on both cost efficiency and quality. More privatized systems are more fragmented and incur more transaction costs. There is an incentive to overtreating at private for profit hospitals. Managing and regulating private providers becomes difficult, leading to even more inefficiencies and even cases of corruption. Public systems are more efficient because they ensure economies of scale in the purchasing, supply and distribution of drugs and equipment. A unified health system spends virtually nothing on competitive advertising. A report of the World Bank states that the private sector generally performs worse on technical quality than the public sector. Public systems perform tasks that are not directly linked to providing care, disease prevention, public awareness programs, health education, and immunization programs, often neglected in profit-based systems. In order to make more profit, companies can decide to save money, materials, training, staff, availability, care that matters, documented cases where patients have been subjected to unnecessary or dangerous medical procedures simply due to greed. Commercial logic also leads to a biomedical bias based on marketable products such as technology and medication, ignoring the importance of the health system as a whole. Outsourcing services to the private sector brings a loss of direct control, undermining the right and obligation of the state to regulate in the public interest. Commercial companies take the scarce resources, such as health workers, away from the public sector. We find dynamics of brain drain in the public sector, in remote areas and poorer regions. The drive for higher profit margins leads to poorer working conditions unpaid overtime and higher work pressure. To conclude, the universal right to health is threatened worldwide by dynamics of privatization and commercialization of healthcare, which increase inequality and put the lives of people in danger. Despite the dominant neoliberal narrative, evidence shows that public healthcare is better and is one of the necessary paths to ensure health for all. Movements worldwide, like the People's Health Movement, the European Network Against Privatization and Commercialization of Healthcare, are organized locally and globally to defend this right and reverse the trend towards privatization of health. Support and join them.